with us on a Wednesday. I'm Greeny. We are in Bristol, and we are thrilled that you are here. And it is our job to try and keep you entertained and distracted from all the other things going on in your life right now. And we have plenty to do it with. And let's start by getting up and going with the NFL determining that Tom Brady did not violate any off-season work rules when he recently tried to enter Bucks offensive coordinator Brian, uh, Byron Leftwich's home. Brady was going to retrieve a playbook, but accidentally entered the wrong house. No harm, no foul, says the NFL. Elsewhere, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper said yesterday he expects the Coca-Cola 600 to be held without fans on its traditional date over Memorial Day weekend, quote, unless health conditions go down in the state. Elsewhere, five-star point guard Dacian Nix has decommitted from UCLA and signed with the NBA's new G League Pathway program. He's the third top prospect to do that, including the number one player in the country. We're going to talk about it in this hour. And then our top story this morning, Jameis Winston and the Saints officially agreeing to a one-year contract on Tuesday. Winston was with Charlie Ward on Instagram Live last night and talked about why he chose to sign with New Orleans. Being a part of New Orleans Saints, being a part with Drew Brees, Taysom Hill, Sean Payton, uh, Coach Joe uh, Lombardi, Coach Pete Carmichael Jr. When you think about that room, I mean, that's like that's like a Harvard education in, in quarterback school. Um, so I wanted to put my ego aside, uh, put the money to the side and think about my family, think about my career. So it's a proverb, um, humility comes before honor. Uh, so, so I have to humble myself, and this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity uh, to be with Drew Brees and to be with the New Orleans Saints, and just prepare, just prepare for when my when my next opportunity is going to present itself. A humility, such an interesting conversation to have there, and I've got my crew ready to go. Dan Orlovsky, Mike Tannenbaum, Dominique Foxworth are here this morning. Mr. T, I want to start with you from being in a position where you're the type who makes these decisions. As you were listening to Jameis there, what did you hear? That was outstanding. It sounds like somebody that was maturing not only on the field, but off the field. He was recently married, and I think that's exactly right. Go invest a year, learn from a really good program, from the coaches to the players. Learn how Drew Brees hydrates. Learn how he takes notes. Learn how he prepares. And then look what happened with Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater sits behind Drew Brees. Now he's the starter in Carolina. And ironically, Greeny, Drew Brees was 26 years old when he left the Chargers at an inconsistent start to his career, and now he's a Hall of Famer. Jameis Winston is now 26. So, I want Dan Orlovsky, I want to get specific here, if we can, because it's easy for us to say he needs to learn from Drew Brees. He needs to learn in this program. What makes a person throw 30 interceptions? What specifically is it he has to learn? Yeah, two areas, Greeny. First of all, no panic throws. Jameis needs to get the panic throws out of his game. And in his ability to watch Drew Brees, Drew has gotten into his game the ability to not panic. Because if you're ever watching warm up, like Drew will throw a ball to the right. And then with the ball out of his hands, he'll kind of train his body to muscle memory. Go to number two in the progression. Go to number three. Go to number four. And so that's the way he's trained his body to never have to make these panic throws. Where if number one's not there, his body is, is so in routine and in muscle memory where he'll know where number two or number three or number four is. And so that minimizes those panic throws of not knowing where guys are. And then number two is he's going to be able to sit back and watch Drew Brees, a guy that's incredibly accomplished and incredibly talented, play some boring football. And what I mean by that is, hey, three-yard completion, four-yard completion. He took a check down. Man, he threw the ball away. And Jameis could sit there and watch Drew Brees do that and think to himself, wait, the guy that's going to be in the Hall of Fame is willing to do that stuff. I can still be a great player and be willing to play boring football when that's what the defense allows me to do. And so, Greeny, if he gets rid of those panic throws by watching Drew Brees in the muscle memory, and if he's willing to play some boring football by watching Drew Brees, he's absolutely going to be a starter in the NFL again. Yeah, and so, Dominique, let's pick up on that thought there. He's 26 years old. He has talent that made him the number one pick in the draft, and he's thrown for 5,000 yards in a season. Why isn't he the successor to Drew Brees in New Orleans? Could they have wound up putting themselves in an extraordinary situation if he develops in the way that Dan is suggesting? I think he should be the successor to Drew Brees in New Orleans because of Sean Payton and because of Drew Brees. I know everyone is pointing to Teddy Bridgewater as someone that he, that um, James can look at and try to model his his kind of holdover in New, in New Orleans. But I think actually 
Drew Brees is the guy because when Drew Brees came there, as Coach T said, they were around the same age, but their stats were almost identical if you look at their careers up until this point. And I think what Sean Payton was able to do with Drew Brees, we forget they drafted in um, San Diego, the Chargers drafted Phillip Rivers while Drew Brees was there. We forget that Drew Brees was not always on this Hall of Fame trajectory. And I think we owe a lot, or he owes a lot of credit to Sean Payton. I think Sean Payton could potentially do the same thing for Jameis. And Jameis has been in high pressure situation his entire career, even if you go back to college. He has never really had a chance to sit back and look and learn football. So I hope he gets this opportunity, and I hope he ends up staying in New, in New Orleans. So if the opportunity comes next year or beyond, that's one thing. If it comes this year, as happened last year, very quickly, or I'll round the horn. Tannenbaum, I'll start with you. Week five, Drew Brees gets hurt, and he's going to miss four weeks. Who becomes the starting quarterback in New Orleans? Jameis Winston, they already answered that question. Taysom Hill only threw six passes last year. If they believed he'd be the starter, they wouldn't have signed Winston. You guys both agree with that, Dan? Uh, Dominic, you, bo you both agree he gets the ball and not Taysom Hill. Yeah, no-brainer. Nick, you agree too? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay, so it's as simple as that. So maybe he gets the opportunity this year. Maybe it takes another year. But either way, this could be the best possible situation for Jameis Winston. And that leaves one superly accomplished quarterback, which is not good English, but you know what I mean, who's out there looking for a team, and that's Cam Newton. He remains a free agent. The Panthers released him last month after nine seasons with the team, replacing him with Teddy Bridgewater. And frankly, it's almost impossible to overstate the accomplishments that he has had in his career, but the questions right now are all about health. From entering the league in 2011 through 2017, he missed just three games. And of course, he was a league MVP and went to a Super Bowl. But going back to 2018 now, he has missed 16 games, including back-to-back season-ending injuries to his throwing shoulder and his foot. So as we look at this situation, again, Mike Tannenbaum, I'll come back to you as a general manager. How does this play out for him? I think the landing spot for me would be New England. And I know that's not a great scheme fit, but I worked for Coach Belichick a couple of times. He likes to sign players that have given him trouble defending. And Cam Newton is 2-0 against Coach Belichick. When healthy, he averages 10 wins a year, 33 touchdowns, and maybe there's a package for him. The big question on Cam is, is he healthy? But he's a weapon, and I know he's not exactly what Jared Stidham is or certainly what Tom Brady was, but it could give them a different element to that New England offense. So this, I've been lobbying this for the longest time, if only because I'm in the interesting business and nothing could be more interesting than Cam Newton going to New <laughs> England. Dan Orlovsky, do you like it? No, I don't. I haven't. I mean, New England would have to scrap everything they've done in their playbook for the last 20 years and totally bring in a new thought process for Cam Newton. So I don't see it. I think it's important to point this out. Like, Cam is not signed on a team, not because he can't play anymore, right? Like, we, th this isn't a guy that this talent all of a sudden fell off and all, and teams are like, well, do we want to bring him on? Is it worth it anymore? This is all tied to that shoulder injury, really, from 2018. You know, a big question that teams are going to have to ask Cam Newton is, what is your expectation for your role? What is your expectation for your money? And then are you still willing to be a runner with the football? Because if Cam Newton sits there and says, yes, I'm going to give you 100 carries a year. I feel healthy. My body is good. That year off was really big for me. Then Cam's a starter. There's no question about it. But if Cam goes, you know what? I don't want that to be part of my game anymore. It got me to here. I'm not going to be used as a runner. Then that really minimizes his window or, or, or teams that will allow him to be a part of their team. And so, uh, listen, uh, teams that you can say need to upgrade or should upgrade their backup quarterback spot, you could look at Tennessee if Cam's willing to be a backup there. You could look at the Pittsburgh Steelers. You could look at the Denver Broncos. You could look at Seattle. You could look at the Dallas Cowboys and upgrading their backup quarterback spot for a playoff caliber football team. So that's the question for Cam. What role does he want? Yeah, I mean, to, to me, Neek, that brings up the question of psyche. And, and you've talked a lot about psychology on the show over the last few days involving Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre. Does Cam Newton feel to you like a guy who was ready to walk into a building someplace and say, all good, I'm the backup, I'm, I'm just going to take that role? Absolutely not. I agree with all the things that Dan was saying, except for some of those teams that have established quarterbacks. Like, why would Cam Newton at this age want to go behind Dak Prescott or Russell Wilson? Like, Cam Newton should want to and probably does want to go to a place like the Buffalo Bills. I like that spot for him because that's a situation where the offense is not that different from what he's used to. The quarterback who's starting is doing kind of an imitation of Cam and how he plays. 
I think that's a place where he would want to go. I'm sure that it's not something Josh Allen would welcome necessarily, but I'm not sure that, that Cam Newton doesn't give them a better chance to take over the AFC East than any other quarterback that they have on their roster or that is currently available. Well, I'm going to quote a great man, and that man is named Dominique Foxworth. You once said on this show, Josh Allen is a poor man's, no, a destitute man's Cam Newton. So, so Dan, I'll of come course. back to you. Does, if, 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 if Cam Newton is healthy, if he is all the things you just described, is he a better starting quarterback for Buffalo than the one they have? I don't see that, no. I think Josh Allen is this player that's ascending and on the rise. And not only on the field, but off the field. He's really taken ownership of the Buffalo Bills. And he is a version of what Cam was once as a young player. And so if I'm Buffalo, while I do believe it would impact our football team if I had to turn to him on the field, I wouldn't do that. Because I want to make sure that Josh Allen knows you're our guy. We believe in you. This is your I team. And I always talk about this process, Greeny. Becoming the, 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 the CEO of the billion dollar company and I wouldn't want to undermine a young player that is on the trajectory. Go ahead Nick. I could understand that. I buy, I buy that point that potentially it's disruptive to have someone come in there and undermine Josh Allen. But you know what helps? Balling. And you know what Cam Newton can do? He can ball. You saw no, that no. playoff game that they had last year where Josh Allen was throwing balls across his body to fullbacks deep down the field and trying to do laterals and whatnot. I think Josh Allen is a young, talented quarterback. He's gotten better, but he's not Cam Newton in his prime. And the idea that you think that there's even something to think about that Cam Newton, if Cam Newton can return to the form that he was before that he was hampered by these injuries, that him and Josh Allen are even, even in the same conversation, I think is a little bit absurd. Mike T, I got 15.